So Quickly just got a whole lot better with their latest version that they released earlier today. In this new version, they've solved one of the biggest problems that people faced when they were building websites using Quickly, and I covered what that problem was and how it worked in this video here. Sections in Quickly are different. So if you're curious to know what that was, definitely go and watch that video. I will link to it in the description below. But to summarize very briefly here in this video, the problem was that when you added a section block onto the page and then added content inside there, like a heading and image, on the front end, you would have your section block outputted and then the content was here, but it was wrapped in this inner div with the CC wrapper class, so the inner wrapper element, which gave it its max width and centered it on the page here. But you didn't have the ability to edit or access this inner wrapper from inside of the editor. It's hidden in between here. And that caused a few problems. Again, they are in that separate video that I have linked in the description below. But as of this morning, that should be solved. And we're going to look at how that works in this video today. So here's the release from the team where they say that the highlight of this release that was done today is the revamped section block now featuring an accessible container block within it, along with significant performance enhancements and bug fixes. If we click through here, this is the entire change log. So this is the new section block up here. And then we have section and container elements in global styles. That's going to come into play in just a second. And then there's some other things down here as well, which I haven't even had time to go through. I really just want to focus this video on this new section and container blocks. So back here, regarding the transition to the new section container layout, we have decided to deprecate the current section block for new installations only while continuing support for the old section block. However, if you wish to switch to the new version, affecting all current layouts, but not adding container blocks would have to be done manually. You can do so via the quickly settings page deprecated panel. In addition, we are introducing block specific styles in global styles, elements and blocks. These styles will apply it to the default block class. And you will also have the option to target specific blocks by entering a class similar to our HTML element styling. Initially, you can find the section and container blocks in there. And then we go on to some other things in that release. So we're really focusing on this part here. So let's go ahead and update quickly and see how this all works. And down here, we're going to update to version 1298.1. And what's interesting is if we go back to discourse and we go to change log, 1298 was released 12 hours ago. And then five hours ago, they released another updated version. So the initial release of this was on this post here. And then during those five or six or seven hours, people were reporting bugs and things not working after the latest update. Another version was released again, six or seven hours after this initial one, which if we click into it is fixing some of those bugs. So it's really cool to see how fast quickly release new features, but then also release fixes for bugs that are reported. So definitely if you're thinking of using quickly or you're already using quickly, make sure you are a member of their discourse. But coming back here, we are updating to that version that has the bug fixes. So let's click here and go update plugins. Then let's go to the front end of our website. You can see there's no visible changes here to my website. And that's what we expected because reading the release notes, it said that the transition is only for new installations. If you wish to switch to the improved section and container, you can do so via quickly settings deprecated panel. So let's head over to there. So here I'll go to quickly and to settings and down to advanced settings and scroll to the bottom. So here deprecated section layout prior to this version, the section block did not reveal the inner container. Activate this to maintain the old behavior. So we don't want to maintain the old behavior. So let's turn that off. And I saw at the top here, we need to regenerate some things. So let's go down and I'll just regenerate all of these and that, and that, and that. And now if we reload here, we should see it break, which is what we expected. So if we have a look at what's going on in the code here now, we have our section and then we have our column block in here which if we go to edit our template, because it is our front page in here, we have our section and then our column block. So what we see in the HTML that's output on the front end matches what we have here now in the builder. So the next thing that we need to look at is how to add that container because it's obviously not there. If you wish to switch to the new version, affecting all current layouts, but not 
adding container blocks, which would have to be done manually. So back here, if I right click the columns and I go to wrap, there is a container block. And if I click on that, now we have our section, container and our columns. And if I zoom this out a little bit more, that's a little bit more obvious that the container is pulling the content into the page. Whereas before, when there was no container, the columns were stretching the full width. So if I just put the columns back into the container, now they're pulled in. So where we wrapped the content in a container, you would need to do that for every section across your website. Luckily, I don't have that many pages on my website. It's not the most complex website, so it wouldn't take me too long to do that. So I am gonna swap over to do that and just do that manually. But now that we have this, let's go to the front end and let's reload. And let's have a look at what's going on down here. So we have our section, then we have this div here. And I'll just zoom out so you can see that it is pulling it in. So we have our section block, then we have our container, which has cc-cntr for container. And then inside there, we have our content, which is our columns block. Now back on this container, we can see that by default, it has display flex, flex direction column. And that's just so that when you add elements in to the section, they just stack under each other. And then it has margin left and right auto to center it on the page. And then it has a max width so that it's not stretching the full width of the page. So that's how we get it pulled in to the middle of the page. Now for those Bricks Builder users, this is the same behavior that the container has inside of Bricks Builder, where it has display flex, flex direction column. Here, if I go to my girlfriend's website that is built using Bricks Builder, and we have a look at the section here, inside there's a container, and the container has a max width, and down here it is display flex, flex direction column and then margin left and right to bring it into the middle of the page. And it has the max width up here. So I thought that was just worth pointing out. Now coming back into quickly, if we have a look at this new container element, if we go over and look at the max width property, you can see that it's set to 1366 pixels wide. And when I initially saw this, I wasn't sure where this was coming from. And so I clicked on the container and then I went to sizing and there was no max width set there. And I clicked through all these different tabs here and I couldn't seem to find it. I also went to global styles and then under settings and I couldn't find anything inside of here, which in the previous version of quickly, if we were to go to global styles and then to settings, this is the section defaults. This is where we set the max width and some padding. But in the new version, they aren't there. So I was wondering, okay, well, where's this max width coming from? But if you were unlike me and you actually read what the release notes were, you would have paid more attention to this sentence here. In addition, we are introducing block specific styles in global styles, elements, and blocks. Initially, you can find the section and contain block styling options there. So what that means is we can come here into quickly and then go to global styles and element, and now we see two new options, section and container. And if we go into the container and I add and then click into here, and for the name, I could call this default full width. And we're gonna use class in the next example. So stick around for that there. But down here for the max width, I might set this to 1200 pixels just for today and click save and save. So now if I refresh on the front end and have a look at the code, we have our section, we have our container, and it has that max width of 1200, which is overwriting the one that quickly outputs by default, which is the 1366 pixels. Now, the next thing that I wanna point out is that we did not specify a class here. And that's important because whatever we add here is going to be used by default for all new sections. So if I was to collapse all of this like that, and I delete that, and then I go ahead and I add a new section onto the page, that outputs the container by default, so that's worth noting. And if I add into here a paragraph and just write a bit of text and then save and save, on the front end, if we have a look at the code here, we have our section and then our container that has the max width of 1200 pixels, which is what we set under global styles, elements, and container here, again, which does not have a CSS class. Now, what happens if we specify a CSS class? Let's go up. And let's add a new option here and click into this. So the name, I'm gonna call this content contained. And then the class is going to be content contained. And then here under sizing, let's set its max width to be my custom property max width content, which I've defined to be 55 rems. So if we save this and save and review what this looks like in quickly under global styles and elements 
in container if we go up. We now have two different container styling options. We have the default, which again has no CSS class. By default, this container gets all the options that we set under here. In my example today, I've only specified a max width, but if you specified any other properties here, they would get applied by default to this container. But if we go up and go into the content contained container, this gets output when we apply a CSS class and it gets these properties applied. So I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna call this section default. And I'm gonna give this a background color of the sand color, just so we can see what we're doing. Then let's go ahead and duplicate this. And this one, I'm going to call this content contained. And then on this container, if we click here and search for content contained, it's not there, but I wonder if we, I haven't actually done this yet. So content contained and press enter. We've now created that global CSS class and we can see the content has been pulled in there. So I'm gonna give this section a different background color so we can see what's going on. And then let's go ahead and save and save. And on the front end, let's reload. And now if we have a look at the code, our first section, the container has the default 1200. But if we go to the second container here with the CSS class content contained, it chains that custom content contained class to this container and then outputs the values there. So that's the difference between adding a CSS class there and not adding a CSS class. Now, if we come over to section, we add a new section style and click into it. And I'll call this default section. And we want to apply this by default. So we're not gonna add a class. We'll go to margin and padding. And under padding, on the top, we'll add 3XL. On the bottom, 3XL. And on the left and right, we'll add our size medium. So let's save and save. Back here, we'll reload. And if we have a look at what's going on here, now we have our section that has the padding on top and bottom and the side padding. And then inside there, we have our content that is contained. Now, one question that I have that I'm only really going to find out by rebuilding my website using the new section and container blocks is the following. Here, if we go into quickly and then to global styles and then under our elements and then into our container, this here was where we set our default. That makes sense to me. I drag my section in and the container comes with it. And by default, the container has the values here, which I've set to be 1200 wide. But my question comes from adding a, another style here, which then I'm going to apply using a CSS class where in today's video we did content contained, where we then give it a max width of something like 700 pixels. And then to apply that, we needed to go onto our container and then come up to here and then create that CSS class, and then it gets that styling applied. Am I more likely to use that versus just clicking on a container, coming up to here, adding a new global CSS class, like container contained, and pressing enter, and then on this actual class, then going and adding my styling here to be 700 pixels like that. To me, that might make a little bit more sense, and it's a little bit faster because I'm making the class and then creating the values versus creating the container with the styling and then creating the class that then inherits the styling from that other section. It seems a little bit disjointed, but maybe I'm missing something. I definitely, a lot of these things you just need to go and just try and build a website with and then actually understand it. This is just my first glance of having, you know, an hour's look at it this morning. But again, time will tell. The beautiful thing about seeing the section block change into a section and container in this latest version is that this was in response to the community letting quickly know that we needed this to make our lives easier when using quickly and they considered reacted and they put this into this new feature again based on our feedback so that has me thinking what is the thing that i would want to see in one of the upcoming versions i have something in mind that i'm going to let you know about in a second but i would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below what's your one feature that you want to see released in one of these upcoming versions and maybe explain why so we can also get an idea as well. So for me personally, a lot of the time when I'm going and building something here inside it quickly, I'm still finding it difficult to remember that to use CSS grid, I need to insert columns because I'm coming from Bricks Builder where I could just add blocks into my pages or divs. And then on any div or on any block, I could apply CSS grid. So what I'm hoping to see very soon is the ability to use CSS grid on a div. So for example, if we go and insert a div into here, Currently, if you go, you can apply flex and you can apply all of these, but once you click on grid, they hide because you can't apply a CSS grid to a div. 
The only way you can use CSS Grid is by adding a columns block with individual columns inside there for the grid items. And when you click on the columns block, you get access to the grid editor. So I would like to see the grid editor on the div elements. But then I also came across this post from this user today in the discourse where they were wanting the grid editor on a container. And after reading this, it makes a lot of sense. So if we come back here, currently we have a section, a container, and then to use CSS grid, we need to add the columns in there. And then inside there, we have the grid items that are in the grid. But if we could just click on this container and then go to design and then layout and then grid, or have the grid editor here, we wouldn't need to have this parent column block. These children, the grid items, would sit directly in this container. And so we could just delete or remove this one entirely. So it's removing one element completely when we get access to CSS grid on this container. So that's a feature that I'm hoping to see in one of the upcoming releases in the near future. Let me know your most anticipated feature in the comments below and watch this video here if you're interested in how dynamic data works inside it quickly. In that video, I show you what this icon does here, dynamic inserter. It's extremely powerful and you definitely want to see how that works. So here's that video here.